Hello, and welcome to the NARF podcast. My name is Toshio Rahman, and this is David Lewis. And Hello. How's it going, man? Pretty good. You? I'm, I'm pretty good, too. How was, uh, how was your week? Did you have a good week since we did our very first episode? Yeah, my phone's been ringing off the hook with all the positive <laughs> feedback. <laughs> Me too, man. No um, time for anything but, but just answering no or replying to big sponsors. Else. Yeah, yeah. I've been a busy man since that first episode dropped. So, uh, yeah. yeah, it's been a pretty ex- exciting week. Um, it, it, uh, I have uh, to say, I think, uh, I think summer is uh, dying down here in the Netherlands. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, but uh, it's it's been fun. We had a nice picnic uh, over the weekend with some friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was pretty chilly. <laughs> is it, the weather the weather uh, like I guess one of the indications for the summer kind of starting to dissipate is the weather gets a little bit chillier, huh? Well, it's always very unpredictable in the Netherlands. You know, by the coast, uh, things can change one day to the next. So yeah. you got to go to the beach while you can. Yes, I, I uh, actually this I this last week you you said something same here. It's usually in the summertime it doesn't rain and it rained like three days just in the morning and then it started to become a little bit warmer and I think that's an indication in this country in Turkey that summer is starting to kind of go and fall is coming. So and it's a little chillier too, which I like. I don't know about you, but I I definitely would don't mind a little bit of wind and a little bit of cold as opposed to extreme heat. Yeah, I mean, everything in moderation. I'll take some hot days, some cold days, some uh, in-between days. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So, of course, everything in moderation. That'll be one of, we'll we'll do a segment, advice (laughs) for youth, for for the youth. And our first tip will be everything in moderation. That's a good approach. Absolutely. Everything balanced. Uh, So I do have something to say, like uh, just just to all our viewers. So Dave and I recorded our first podcast last week and we posted it on, I think, a Wednesday or a Thursday. And as of 30 minutes ago, we had 35 downloads, <laughs> which is, yeah, I, I'll insert like a, a, an applause track or something here, uh. but uh, that's, it's very cool, Dave. And like, uh, so I was looking, of course, some, most of them are probably people you and I know, but there are people from our home country of Canada to Amsterdam, to Turkey, to Malaysia, to India, to Hong Kong, uh, to London as well. So it's a pretty diverse group. And uh, it, it's, it was very unexpected, but it's kind of cool. Like, I mean, I know we're not doing it for the listeners. Uh, we're doing it because we just enjoy talking. We're doing it for the but money. It, for uh, the money, uh, yeah. And we enjoy well, talking, yeah. Yeah. I did some work based on last, last, uh, <laughs> last week's uh, uh, podcast when I talked about sponsorship and stuff. So I'm going to be a little bit more uh, 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 conservative in my talk of sponsorship. <laughs> I, think, okay. I think that's the better approach. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's uh, great. And then, oh, but um, speaking of Hong Kong, because you mentioned Hong Kong there, yeah. I want to give a, a shout out and a big thank you to uh, Kentaro Ide, yes. a- a.k.a. Kenny G. Kenny G. Um, he did the he amazing. He provided yes. a uh, new track for us, a new intro track and outro. Um, so that we don't get sued by the creators of Pinky and the Brain. Yes, um, yes. He, he gave us a nice uh, remix um, of that uh, yeah, soundtrack. I don't know is, how he does it, but he has some really good skills. Awesome, and he did it so quickly too, and it's amazing. So, like, if you're not going to listen to uh, us to speak, at least go listen to the intro and outro on repeat because it's amazing. It's really cool, and so thank you, Kentaro, for that. And check out. Uh, we'll link his website in the description on the episode. So check it out, check out some of his other music. And speaking sure. of which, yeah, speaking of which, Dave, we got one fan mail, one email on our new NARF pod. No email. way. Totally, totally. It came a couple of days ago. I, I wanted to, I didn't tell you because I wanted to save it until the episode. So it's from a, it's from a general, from a gentleman, just Gregory. It doesn't say anything else. He's from Los Angeles. No last Cal- name? No last name. Just Gregory. Okay. Well, it's like Gregory 72 or something. So like, you know, like, I don't know. I don't okay. know if that's- We can get his uh, age. Yeah, uh, from from uh, from the states, from California, and he he said, uh, "I listened to your podcast about the island of the dead dolls. Uh, I've actually yeah. been there, and it's intensely creepy. I advise you never go." <laughs> that was it. Oh, that's thank, the email. Thanks for that, Gregory. Yeah, that's Gregory. Helpful. Well, that's that definitely. Thank you so much. It's it's interesting because I've never met anyone who's 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 gone. So now we know Gregory. So Gregory, thank you so much, and uh, we'll take your advice literally to heart. I will never go. So it's it's good. <laughs> no. I wasn't planning on it, but now that you've said that, Gregory, I'm definitely not going to go. 
Yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh, um, Dave, how's, how about how about like what you reading this week? Did you read anything interesting you want to share with the viewers, or did you listen to anything interesting, or did you watch anything interesting? I thought like this could be. Well, uh, you always have a good good feedback on on what's happening uh, in terms of media. Um, I'm actually trying to learn Italian. I'm doing a kind of crash course oh, nice. right now in Italian because yeah. I'm planning to go on holiday there in a couple of weeks. Wow! Um, nice. So I'm blazing through uh, Duolingo. I don't yes. know if you use that very much, but um, yeah. it's, you're quite familiar with all these uh, language uh, learning apps. Yeah, um, Duolingo is really good. I think you and I have talked about it in terms of other languages and stuff like that. So like it's, it's I really yeah. like it because it's so convenient. So do, do you find it's helping? Like, have you learned anything? Yeah, I think you need to do it uh, in combination with something else. Because if you do Duolingo on its own, um, you know, it's good for reading comprehension, that sort of thing. Um, but I'm, I'm adding it uh, with watching some Netflix uh, series in Italian. And oh, cool. uh, I got a cool tip. So before like diving into the actual learning of Italian, I'm like, how should I learn the language? Yeah. And I, I watched a bunch of uh, TED Talks yeah. and people who were like polyglots. And yes. they recommended, and, you know, when you watch a foreign language um, movie or TV show, very yeah. often they say, I'll put it on with... Um, English subtitles so you understand what's going on and you can match yeah. up the words possibly and learn that way. Absolutely. But um, counterintuitively, uh, one of the uh, advice from one of the talks was don't do that. It's okay. uh, proven that a better method is to watch it in the same language, uh, in the same subtitles. Um, so Italian language, Italian subtitles. Oh, okay. um, in the original. You learn yeah. much in the original. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so you'll learn much, much quicker because th that way you won't understand pro possibly, you know, even 2% the first time around. Yeah. But then you'll be able to like pick up a few words here and there. Yeah. Then it starts to snowball. Then you pick up like the little turns of phrase that are very natural to Italian speakers. Yeah. You get, you get the cadences and the rhythms. The, yeah, yeah. And the cadence. Exactly. So I've been trying that. Um, it's hard to binge Netflix binge when you're very slowly watching shows in a language you don't understand. No, but I have a quick question because Dave, you you speak French because you are a good Canadian boy who <laughs> learned it in school and they used it in work and stuff. Do you find, because they say that if you know French, uh, then Italian and Spanish are a little bit easier because they come from the same family of languages. Do you find that to be true? Yeah. Yeah. Common, yeah, common words. I yeah. would say so. I mean, they're all kind of connected in one way or the other. Um, yeah. Yeah, it certainly helps. There's a same, similar kind of grammar. Um, there's a similar root. Um, but I guess Italian and Latin, that's all where it started. So it's good to go to the root. Yeah, that's awesome. Very, very cool. I hope your language learning goes well. And send me, remember to send me the link of the videos you watched. We'll post it on, uh, on the site so people can take a look. And if anybody's listening and has tips for like any language learning, I know that's something both Dave and I are really interested in. Just send it our way and we'll take a look and we can even uh, post it online as well for others. Because I'm, I, you know, both you and I are in our mid thirties and I think one of the regrets we both have we've spoken about is we wish we studied more languages when we were younger and it was easier, right? <laughs> as opposed to doing it later in Absolutely. life. Absolutely. And uh, yeah. that'll be t t tip number two to the young people out there. Study early, study languages early. It's so easy when you're younger. It's so difficult when you're older. Yeah, a lot of my friends here have kids and it's just amazing that some of them amazing. are trilingual already. Yeah. Let's just pile oh. them on. They have no idea what's yeah. going on. Of course, and if you, there's this, um, when I was living in Morocco, I met a kid who was like, uh, I don't know what the, what the, the, the Latin uh, phrase would be, but he, he knew five languages fluently and he was going through between them. And it was because he, 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 uh, he met inter and interacted with so many tourists that he was able to pick up like English, Arabic, French, Spanish, like, you know, other European languages. And he, and he, and it was so amazing, like to see like uh, polyglots as we call them, you know, people who have no multiple mm -hmm. languages to go between, you know, and that's really like amazing. It's like flawless, you know? And so, uh, yeah, I, I hope your studies go well and you learn Italian. That'd be amazing because you were learning Grazie. Dutch. Grazie mille. <laughs> I don't know what that means, <laughs> but I'm just joking. <laughs> I know. Um, that's very yeah. cool. I, 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 um, so I didn't learn a language this week, but I started a book which has always been on my list, which I'm sure you've read, but it's never been. I, uh, I started George Orwell's 1984. Uh, um, you've never read it? 
I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry. Oh. It's on my list. So, you know, my reading is that uh, I hated reading up until after university, pretty much. I really, because it was just forced on me and I just didn't enjoy it. And I'm ashamed to say mm. that my interest of reading only kind of came in my my uh, my 20s and obviously until now. And so uh, um, I read everything that, that like I had to in school, <laughs> you know, uh, so the, uh, all the other George Orwell books, uh, I guess Animal Farm, right? That would be the most. Uh, 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 that's a great one. That's yeah. That's the one that's kind of we le- read, and that was amazing too. But uh, so I, this was on a list, and for the last couple of years, I've been reading kind of nonfiction, and then just recently, I just I'm just tired of learning <laughs> anything new. I just wanted to shift to fiction for a little bit, and so I think just to kind of you know what I mean, just take reading more as entertainment as opposed to kind of like actively having to learn something. And I'm not saying anything negative about it. So I'm just, I love reading. So I, I'm going to fiction for a while. So I started George Orwell's book and I'm reading it on the Kindle. And uh, that's another debate, right? Paperback or Kindle or whatnot. Mm, but uh, it's sure. really, like, it's a really interesting read. Like, it's really, really, and then there's so many things that are so kind of applicable to kind of modern day, uh, uh, what's happening in the world right yeah, now. Yeah, it's so, still like, very relevant. Uh, very relevant. Days. So yeah. like, uh, I'll, I'll, do a, I'll do a full book report when I'm done. I think by next week I should be done. But uh but it, I mean, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, I think just keep reading anybody, right? It's, uh, it's an amazing hobby. It has a number of benefits, uh, but, uh, but read. And I'm like, I feel bad when I don't read. You know what I mean? Like I, uh, sometimes it's like for me, I'd rather, like I know you and I talked about this a few months back. Like sometimes you just get bored watching television, even or Netflix, you know? Like you don't, you don't want to watch anything yeah. else. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I don't feel very accomplished if I've binge watched an entire season or yeah um series uh, on netflix i kind of feel a little bit empty i'm like well i've done that yeah. uh, but it's I not really an accomplishment whereas when you're finished reading a big book or something you yeah. really feel like you got something out of it i um, i mean i totally get that like i i go through phases and then to be honest since covid started at the beginning we were binge watching a lot of stuff and it was really like kind of fulfilling and then i just got to a point where i just didn't i just felt bored of binge watching things even though right now uh, my wife and I, we are watching a show. We're not binging it. We're just watching one or two episodes a day. And it's a nice way to end the day. Um, um, it's called Dark. It's on Netflix. It's a German, like, supernatural uh, time traveling show. It's not bad. But, uh, huh. but, the re- but the reading is good. And one other thing is I've been listening to a lot of podcasts since we are, we're official podcasters now. So I've been kind of listening to official. our colleagues. <laughs> and I, uh, <laughs> I'm going to send this to you, Dave, and I'm going to put it up on our, our, our site but I listened to an amazing podcast uh, with Bill Gates uh, last week. And it was, uh, um, it was a very casual podcast on, on something called Armchair Expert. Uh, it's with okay. uh, Dak Shepard. He's an actor, and, uh, but he's got this amazing podcast. So we talked to Bill Gates, and it was more non, like non-techy or non-business-minded, more personable. And so you got to see a part of Bill Gates that you hardly see, where he talked more about his personal life and his ha- hobbies mm-hmm. and what he does day to day. And like, they asked him one question, which I thought was really interesting. They asked him, because, you know, Bill Gates is not only one of the richest men in the world, but he's probably one of the smartest person, people in the world, too. His, his, his brain is amazing. And then like, he, he reads all the time and he has a lot of knowledge and many things. So the host asked him, like, what, uh, for example, does he see as one of the weaknesses uh, that he has? And he says the, 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 the fact that he can't speak uh, any other language fluently is really, really silly. <laughs> they, you wow. know, he, he sees it. Yeah. And so speaking of languages as well, like, you know, uh, he kind of tied it, he kind of tied it into, but he definitely sees his own weaknesses, but I'll, I'll post it up. And if anyone's got a chance, listen to the, the podcast. It's really, really good. Oh, huh. so that out. that's happened. And then, and then just before you start, something happened to me yesterday, which I have been saving to tell you, because you know how our podcast yeah. is all about strange, weird things. So yesterday, so I live in a neighborhood in Turkey where it's predominantly uh, locals and predominantly older people, uh, retirees. Uh, so um, there's really not a lot of young people or foreigners where I live. So yesterday was Sunday and around 2.30, I went for a walk because I'm an old man. <laughs> I had nothing else to do. So I put on my headphones and I go for a walk and, and uh, the local bus in my neighborhood stops at the bus stop. And this person dressed in full like wizard outfit, like Gandalf from Lord of the Rings steps out. And true mm-hmm. story, true story. And, uh, uh, and I'm like, this is weird. Cause like, what's up? And then behind him, someone else uh, steps off and also kind of some type of medieval outfit and his, uh, has got like a staff in his hand. And then a number of other people step out. And then I realize it's a bunch of kids who have, who are going to some type of like 
comic book fair or some cosplay event. You know what I'm talking about? People who dress up oh, to yeah. go. Oh, I've seen that sometimes, yeah. I've seen it too. And I've seen it usually kind of in like, in, in like big cities in the middle of the city where there's like a convention hall or something or, you know, like Comic Con. I've never been to Comic Con, but like I, I've seen videos. But it was so weird that like I, re- I literally live in, uh, in, in the suburbs and these, these kids who are all in their teenage years were dressed up like they were going to go play like uh, some type of game or go to some convention. And then they were just walking down the street like nothing was off. <laughs> it was very strange for a while. But I you wanted should to tell take, them Halloween's in October. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> I wanted to. I, afterwards, I was like, oh, I should have. I should have taken a picture. She could. I could have sh- sh- shared it. But I just thought well, that's a funny little thing to happen on a Sunday afternoon in the suburbs of of Istanbul. But, well, there you uh, go. That, you know, you say, why would I go for a walk? You go to, for a walk and you see funny things. There you go. All right. All right, Dave. I'm going <laughs> to hand it over to you. I'm I'm super excited. Uh, it's your first uh, your first presentation. And uh, um, yeah, take it away. I'm, 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 I've been thinking about it all week. I'm super excited. I think the, the cool element of this podcast is the surprise. You know, yeah, it's, it's very each, cool. Each yeah, yeah. One co-host gets surprised by the other. Yeah, I haven't slept in, in seven days. I'm just waiting for this. <laughs> I'm just terrified by the scary story. <laughs> <I'll tell. laughs> um, yeah, well, it's, it's interesting. You mentioned with the, with the books, um, you know, we just can't stop reading nonfiction because... Uh, truth is stranger than fiction. And yes. uh, I, I think the case that I'm about to uh, talk about today is, is very illustrative of that fact. Um, so I'm gonna be talking about the luckiest unlucky man to ever live. Oh, His name okay. is Frayn Selak. Are you uh, familiar with this uh, individual? I'm not, this is something I have, uh, I know nothing about. So I'm, I'm a newbie, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a freshman student. So you're my professor, take it away. Oh, fantastic, all right. Well, so it's Frayn Selak. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Sorry, Frayn or Fran. Uh, he's a 91-year-old Croatian man. Um, and like I said, he's either the uh, luckiest unlucky man or the luckiest unlucky man, depending on your perspective, based on the story. You can tell me what you think at the end. He is famous for this because he cheated death not once, not twice, but seven times. Seven. Oh, wow. Seven okay. times. Yeah, yeah. So um, he lived a pretty unassuming life in Croatia, then known as Yugoslavia. He was a mild-mannered uh, music teacher. But um, things started to go off the rails, literally, in the winter of 1962. Um, he was taking a train from uh, Sarajevo to Dubrovnik when there was a fault on the line, and it caused the, his particular carriage to plunge off the track and crash into the valley below. Wow. So all 17 of the other passengers in his carriage were either killed on impact or they drowned in the river where the train landed. So Frain somehow managed to escape with only a broken arm. I don't know what exactly happened that he survived, but uh, it was the beginning of a series of unfortunate events in his life. And he had no idea what was coming next, obviously. So just a broken arm, nothing else. Just a broken arm. And he managed to, I guess, swim to shore with one arm. And uh, yeah, pretty lucky guy, I guess. Okay. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and uh, that's one. Keep, okay. keep notes on all the different uh, events. Okay. okay. Uh, so the following year, his mom uh, became sick, uh, unwell. And uh, she's like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. So please come and, uh, and see me. So he quickly, he um, looked for a flight from Zagreb to uh, Rijeka to see her. So um, he had a fear of flying and he had never flown in his life before. Um, but because, you know, he wanted to see his mom, he said, okay, well, I'm going to bite the bullet and I'll book a flight. Um, the thing is, he went straight to the airport and uh, tried to book the, the first flight out or the next flight to uh, Rijeka. But they said, sorry, uh, it's, it's booked. And he said, no, come on, like, my mom's dying. She, she's really unwell. I, I need to get on the next plane. I never know, you know, I, I won't uh, be able to live with myself if I don't see her um, again. So they're like, all right, um, you, can, you can grab a seat at the back, you know, where the flight attendants sit, those kind of yeah. special seats. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you can sit there. You can sit there. Um, this is all pre-September 11 and uh, pre-security <laughs> yeah. things. So security is lax. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Grab a seat. 
And it was quite fortunate that they placed him there in a way because um, the flight was relatively smooth until a few minutes before landing. Something went haywire, the pressure in the cabin dropped and um, the door that he was sitting next to it blew uh, clean off. And uh, he and the flight attendant, they were stuck out of the plane. Um, which is fortunate because the plane crashed, killing no. everybody else on board. He landed in a haystack. <laughs> and apparently the flight attendant uh, that flew out also died. So he was the only survivor of this uh, plane crash. So did, did, do you know, like, like um, so when he, when he landed on the haystack, it was like he was still in his seat, like seat belt in or no? He had like, it was just free fall or I don't know what you call it, but... Yeah, I, I'm a bit uh, unclear on the details. Okay, um, no problem. And that's one thing with this guy's uh, story is that there's a few kind of discrepancies and okay. possibly um, maybe he made this up. That's the, the real thing because someone looked into it and re they couldn't find um, oh, any so evidence of, of, of this having happened. Yeah. But uh, okay. for the sake of this podcast, let's pretend this is all real, okay? Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's incident number two. Yeah. Um, so he's starting to think that things are going a bit funny in his life. Yeah. Um, he never flew again, apparently, after that incident. Yeah, that reason. would do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then uh, we're on to incident number three. In 1967, Selak was, uh, he was taking a local bus, but then it skidded off the road and okay. it crashed into uh, another river. <laughs> yeah. Um, then we had four passengers were killed, but he managed to get out with only a few scrapes and bruises. No way. So once again, survived. But then he was totally done with public transport, yeah. and buses <laughs> and planes and all these things. He said, this is enough. I'm going to buy a car. Yeah. That's what I'm going to use to get around. So yeah. there you go. You think he's going to be safe for the car. Although, you know, cars are notoriously not safe. Of course, yeah. Uh, and he proved that, uh, right? Because um, in 1970, uh, he was driving his um, Yugoslavian, I don't know what the, the brand or... The or brand. Marquee, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, Lada, something like that. Something sure. not very good. Yeah. And his car burst into flames. So... No, just out of nowhere. To, out of nowhere. No way. Um, yeah, so he managed to jump out before it, uh, the car actually blew up. Yeah. Um, so again, survived. Oh my goodness. And he got another car. Yeah, of course, he right? Was, he said, no, no planes, no, no trains, no... Uh, <laughs> no, no buses. buses. No. <laughs> but, but I gotta get around. So I gotta got get around. Car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, three years later, yeah. driving around, and uh, the car also uh, caught fire. Caught, yeah. This time, the flames were shooting at him through the air vent. No, oh, oh yeah, 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 from the AC. Through, like, uh, where the AC were, was. And um, I'm not a mechanic, I'm not an engineer, I'm not yeah, exactly that does, sure how this happened, but uh, yeah. it doesn't sound very good. It doesn't sound like yeah. a very high-quality vehicle he was yeah. driving. It's not supposed to do that, right? Like, we can, we can agree I mean, on that. Yeah, that's not, that's not meant to happen. Uh, it's supposed to cool you down, not, not set fire to you. Yeah. Um, so, again, the worst that happened to him here was just a few minor burns. He survived yeah. there. Uh, so that was in the, the 70s. So that was 1973, I think. Yeah. And um, pretty traumatized after all these incidents. But uh, he managed to go um, 22 years uh, incident-free from that point oh, that's, on. That's good. So, so he must have imagined, like, oh, man, that was a rough few years. But, you know, I'm in the clear now. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm all good. Cool. Yeah. But you'd be wrong. He was wrong. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> Things uh, went haywire in 1995. He was hit by a bus uh, in Zagreb. Holy shit. Sorry. Oh, holy crap. <laughs> like hit by a, like, a, like uh, yeah. Yeah, he was just crossing the street, I guess, not paying much attention. And maybe the bus driver wasn't paying much attention either. And yeah. Uh, hit by a bus. Um, and again, he was quite a bit older at this point. But uh, apparently he walked away and uh, no major incident. So um, what? Nothing by hitting, yeah. getting hit by a bus? Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. 
That's yeah. crazy. Uh, on, on a side note, I'm sorry, I don't want to direct. I actually, I have a friend who was actually hit by a bus. I won't mention names and stuff like this he, when he was younger. And he was in like a coma, he told me, for like a month or something. And he's got scars like all over his body. This was like two, three decades ago because my, my friend is older now when he's younger. And he told me like the way he described it as it was like, I was just crossing, I got hit, and then I woke up a month later. Like that was all he remembered, you know? And so like, yeah, uh, I mean, you're not really meant to survive getting hit by a bus. Yeah, it's, uh, absolutely. Not a, a forgiving vehicle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh so, my gosh. So this guy just like, he's just walking around like he's Superman, right? Like uh, just a couple of scratches and walks off. Yeah. So he's either um, Mr. Invincible or people are just terrified to be around him. <laughs> yeah. Oh um, my gosh. So, so this is number, I think this is number six, right? The sixth or seventh, uh, uh, number six uh, incidents, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was number six, I think. Number six. And then, uh, so then we, where are we at? So his seventh and final incident yeah. was, uh, again, driving. He shouldn't have been driving at this point because <laughs> he had two uh, This is a, big, his, third, major... his third car, right? His, his, his third... third car, yeah. <laughs> his, uh, third, his third uh, Croatian car. <laughs> really, I would just become a hermit at this point and just yeah. you know, lock the doors, order some delivery, and uh, yeah, hope for the best. But yeah, he was driving up a, a mountain road for some reason. And um, he was run off the road by a careless United Nations truck driver. So I guess no it was um, during the, um, the wars in the Balkans in the 90s. Uh, so yeah. the UN was present at the time. Yeah. Um, but those reckless and cavalier uh, UN people, they were, they were driving on this mountain pass, probably not very familiar with the treacherous terrain and terrain yeah they ran the guy off the road oh my so, gosh um, it, it was quite a big drop and like he had time to i guess get things in order and he, he uh i think he was either flung out of the car um didn't have a seatbelt on properly or something uh or he managed to um jump out the window this the story again is a bit uh, sketchy or hazy yeah um but because of that he um, managed to land on uh, some branches of, of a tree and that broke yeah. his fall. Oh my uh, goodness. His car exploded and yeah, uh, wouldn't have survived, obviously, if he, if he uh, stayed in the car. Yeah. So um, that was the, the last of his uh, major incidents. But they're all pretty ridiculous. Of and course. Insane. Yeah. Um, but here's the, the real icing on the cake to Frayne's story. Okay. In um, 2003, yeah, he won the lottery. No, oh, no way. <laughs> how much? How much did he win? Bucks. He, he a million, million dollars. Bucks. Wow. Yeah. So all all that bad so luck kind of came around against it, like uh, for the better, I guess, huh? Yeah. So uh, at the time, he just got married again to, to his. Um, I think it was his fifth wife. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, yeah, I was reading uh, the Wikipedia article about the guy, and it's, it just casually mentions that he was married for the fifth time. So for the it fifth didn't time. say whether, well, like... I think yeah, when, you, when you survive death seven times, really, being married five times really isn't uh, comparative, you know? <laughs> it doesn't compare. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I'd love to know uh, the story about the, the other wives, but, uh, yeah, he seems yeah, that he's living a pretty happy life now with his fifth wife. He's still alive? Um, He's 91 years old, still alive. 91. He's, wow. Yeah. He's given away most of his money. He said yeah. money doesn't give you happiness. Yeah. Uh, he's uh, given it away. He, I mean, he had a bit of a bender when he first got the money. He, he bought a boat, a couple houses. Uh, but then he realized it wasn't making him happy. So yeah. he gave it away to some charity. He like, built a school, uh, friends and family, that sort of thing. Yeah. But... Um, Apparently, uh, like I said earlier, he's having some trouble like with his friends and remaining family because um, of all the bad things that happened to him. A lot of people yeah. are superstitious. They like don't want to be near him because, you know, all the terrible things that have happened and he survived, but all the other people around him died. So uh, somewhat understandably, uh, people don't want to go traveling with him, don't want to get in the car, don't yeah. want to leave the house with him just because yeah. of... Uh, that's all the all the terrible thing that's happened. So um, I don't know. What do you think? Like, would you get in a in a car with this dude? Are you superstitious like that? I'm not super. I'm not really superstitious. 
but like you know uh like i've had one br- i've had uh, two brush ins with death not to this level like you know i got into a pretty bad car accident but thankfully nothing really bad happened and is that but like uh, the fact that it's happened seven times is is kind of strange isn't it like what are the chances even like from a statistical point of view or say you're like an insurance adjuster or something like what's what are the chances of like somebody surviving like a falling out of a plane, three car accidents, you know, getting hit by a bus. Yeah. That's insane. His, his insurance premium is must be sky <laughs> high. Um, sky high. Uh, yeah, I, I would say it's in the millions. So the one in, one in uh, several million, I would say. Yeah. Uh, you don't know. When you, when, um, when you started the story, I thought immediately about Bruce Willis in that movie, uh, that M. Not Shyamalan movie, you know, the one where he can't die. <laughs> um, Unbreakable. Remember, you know, he was also at the beginning of the movie, he's also in a, in a, in a train accident where everyone dies except for him and he walks away without a scratch and it's more of a supernatural thing but uh but that's crazy man so is he is he yeah. famous in, in in his home country i'd imagine so right like people know him yeah um i tried finding some interviews with him uh, i with didn't you too? i really do a huge amount of research uh but there's a few like pretty funny uh, animation clips uh, documenting his life. I yeah. think he really became famous after the, the lottery win. Yeah. Where he like told this story, uh, you know, when they have lottery winners, they're like yeah, yeah, yeah. paraded in front of the TV and they're like, you know, tell us your story. Uh, are you and struggling? Like most, yeah. Most of the time it's like, you know, I'm just a regular Joe and like I work at nine to five and I do my just lottery. My life. Every Monday. Yeah. yeah. And this guy's like, I've survived death seven times and now I want a million dollars. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think that's where like he really got uh, global fame is he had that press conference there and uh, told his story, uh, and now it's a pretty uh, interesting thing to to check out. But then, like I said, um, hard to verify some of the things he said. Partially, maybe you know he was an older guy when he was telling the stories. The details in his head maybe a bit yeah. uh, hazy. Maybe he blanked out a few times uh, when he had these incidents. Yeah. Like you said, you get hit by a car, you might not remember exactly the details. <laughs> um, yeah. But the plane, <laughs> but the plane crash. That's uh, documented, right? That's probably that's, that's verified. Sh- the, the problem is people said that they, they can't find a record of, of a plane crash. Uh, oh, no way, really? In 1960, uh, whatever, when it happened. The thing yeah. is, it was, from what I understand, a pretty small plane. So... Uh, and it was happening in, you know, communist Yugoslavia where there wasn't necessarily free press. So yeah. I don't know how it works with records back then. So possibly it happened. Who knows? Yeah. I, I just, I just, uh, I'm listening. I'm just uh, Googling what the, the national airlines of Yugoslavia is and it's Air Yugoslavia. I, I've never flown it, but uh, I'm sure it's an amazing airlines in 2020. Uh, but uh Interesting. And I, and also I have to mention when you were selling the story, I was, I typed in like, I wanted to know what type of car he wanted who's driving. So I typed in uh, Yugoslavia cars and I looked at the pictures yeah. and if you show like the cars look so sad <laughs> from Yugoslavia. <laughs> like if you look <laughs> at the pic, if you look at the pictures, we'll post it on the, on, on this page. If you look at the pictures and you're like, which country is this from? Most people would be like, yeah, that's, that's Yugoslavia. <laughs> like <laughs> that's so oh, yeah, sad. They, they have their own car called the Yugo. Yeah, the Yugo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I mean, I know people need to get a, from point A to point B. It was probably like a cheap Eastern European car for the time or something, but it looks very Eastern European. You know what I mean? It was called the worst car in history. So, uh, <laughs> I <can> understand <laughs> that the, it caught fire a couple of times. Yeah. Um, so, so I have a question. So, like, so you said you don't know too much about his, like, his, his, his wife and kids, if he has got, got that. Because like, I'm wondering what it's like to have your husband being this person or your dad being this person. Like, are you also afraid or are you like, no, maybe it'll, maybe his luck will also like, you know, transfer to me as well. Or is it just sort of a fluke, you know? Yeah. I mean, once it happens seven times, then I, I think I would get superstitious personally. I think, uh, yeah, it's a bit too much for me to be around someone like that. You know, if I was his son or daughter or, wife or whatever um yeah you know it's family so you got to stick around but well really, maybe i'd be looking over my shoulder a few times well the, he he had uh, he he's gotten he's been married and divorced i guess four times and with it now with his fifth wife so clearly like people know who he is going into the relationship and they're they're like maybe yeah, they're cool. freaked out they're like sorry i can't be around someone who's so accident prone or yeah except except for wife number five who just who just 
made a million dollars. Like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, technically, she, she lucked out, right? Like, that was the positive yeah, I, one. I, I don't know whether she came before the lottery win or after. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. important to know. That's true. Well, but, sometimes, uh, you know, you see, you see these people who are, like, in their 90s, and they're, like, you know, dating, uh, getting married, like, living it up. And I'm like, good for you, man. Like, you know, age is not why a not? number. <laughs> why not? You've, you've, uh, you've done. Do you think, do you think if you, this wasn't on Wikipedia or online and you were just like, say this was grandpa, right? Like this was your grandpa or my grandpa. And we're just go, we're visiting him. Uh, we're visiting a uh, grandpa friend and he like tells <laughs> yeah. us his story. Do you think you'd believe it? Like if it came from his you're, mouth? You're like, shut you're up like, grandpa. <laughs> this is like, this is just grandpa talking. Like That's he always rubbish. talks. Yeah. <laughs> because I wouldn't believe it. Would you? Like this guy survived. Go seven back times. to your crossword puzzles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your Yugoslavian cars you know so like that's insane I wonder if like I wonder if the you know the the, the uh, death number five no, no, the death rush number five or six the one with the UN car you told me about yeah I wonder if that's like uh, like if the UN like took responsibility and stuff like that you know what I mean like you know like because uh, uh, like you know Tracy Morgan the, the comedian he got hit by a Walmart car like a couple years back and he was in a coma mm. and, he, and he got like a huge settlement like huge I'm probably like eight figures or nine, whatever it was. Do you think the UN, I'm not, I'm not being, I'm not trying to be a capitalist here, people. I'm not greedy. I'm just asking, do you think the UN sort of took responsibility or was like, oh man, this is not good. Um, I'm not sure the UN uh, took responsibility for much in uh, the former Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia. Yeah, the former Yugoslavia. Um, so I don't think uh, poor Frayn Silak got uh, much compensation out of them. But um, it was kind of a, a quirky side story to this is that I uh, saw one of these animated clips that, were, that was profiling his, his life on, on YouTube. And yeah. apparently uh, he, he tried to sue or he threatened to sue um, the creator of the, of the animation because he didn't like the way he looked in the video. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, of like, course, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look. I'm going to find Google. He's like, how I don't have a looks. mustache. This is unacceptable. Oh, that's, that's his complaint after 91 years. Yeah. <laughs> I don't look... Pro oh, my gosh. Look at this guy. Oh, man. He, like, he looks like he's, like he's got stories in his life, and too. You know, like those people who have like those faces that look like, I got a story behind this face. You know? Yeah, he looks like he's lived a good life. He kind of looks like he owns like a deli in like uh, in like uh, in Toronto or in New York or something like that. And he's like sitting there with his but cappuccino. Is, it's Americano. Yeah. Like you're looking at pictures of him, right? He, I don't see a yeah. single scar. His skin yeah. looks pretty nice. Um, I mean, if he had flames in his face, like crash landings, all that kind of stuff, you'd think he'd have some disfigurement somewhere, but uh, yeah. no sign yeah. of it. So we, we, we can, I mean, uh, you tell, like, so my, like, if you tell me this story, it, like, one of a number of things could happen. Number one, certain parts of it could be fudged, right? Like, it could be. It's a possibility. We don't know. Some yeah. of it could be lies. Number two, he could be just extremely one of the luckiest people in the world, like, like the title of this podcast, right? Like, and not uh, of this episode is. Uh, number three, it could be, mm. I, mean, we, I mean, if we're going to say luck, then we could also say it could be a miracle too, right? Who, uh, who, who knows? Like, perhaps it is. Uh, it's it's there uh, but like uh, either way whatever the reason is it's an amazing story right like I definitely think it's possible like I don't think it's impossible it could happen it's just statistically it's just it's just hard right hard to hard to take well, it in here's the thing even if it's entirely made up yeah uh, I would say kudos to him for making himself famous yeah <laughs> and conning the world with conning the story the world. because uh it's, it takes a certain level of creativity and uh, yeah, cunning to come up with a story this ridiculous if, if do, it's fake. So, do, um, you, do you know? Do you know like what he did for a living or his job, perhaps? Yeah, uh, I think I mentioned at the beginning he was oh, uh, a music. He was a music teacher. A music teacher. That's a really strange yeah. job, like to link to all this stuff, huh? Yeah. So um, now he's a well, was a millionaire music teacher, but. Uh, yeah, that's that's his life. Um, I think. How, how, how'd you come I across a, this? Oh, that's another good, good story. Um, good question, Tosh. I was uh, always sort of searching around, fishing around for what am I going to talk about? What's kind of unique and interesting that's going to yeah. surprise Tosh? He's a very <laughs> well-read man. He knows lots of things. I need to surprise him. Thank you. Yes, but I, I found um, Wikipedia. Yeah. Has a um, page of weird 
Wikipedia pages. Really? So they've categorized um, different stories and different pages yeah. by how unusual and bizarre they are. And yeah. people have gone to the trouble of writing out full uh, page, like, I don't know, 2000 word essays on these weird and wonderful stories of people like Frayne Selak. So um, I won't uh, divulge too many of these other uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, curious incidents content. Uh, because they may become stories and surprises in further episodes and, and podcasts. So uh, I, I'll, I'll share the link with you. Um, Please. But uh, not, not with our listeners because uh, okay. I want to, you know, keep it fresh we'll, and exciting we'll, on, on the but, Darf podcast. For sure. But we, we, we will share the, fr uh, the Fran Selleck Wikipedia page and that video. I think that the cartoon video. Uh, we should definitely yeah. share those links so people can check it out. Isn't it weird how like uh, like the world's reference point is just this Wikipedia thing? And like I remember, like it didn't it like it kind of started to get popularity just as we were finishing uh, university. It was kind of like the late I remember, kind of like two thousand six, two thousand seven. Because uh, do you remember you and I were in a class and uh, we were in a class uh, of uh, politics of Southeast Asia with uh with yeah. elliot tepper <laughs> i'm laughing because that that professor uh, it was he was it was a strange class but this was in like 2007 and it was in our final year right when we were just finishing mm -hmm. our undergrad do you remember we were in this class and we were reading this article and like they had it was like a, a professional article in like a journal and they had referenced wikipedia as one of the as one of the uh, the sources yeah. You, do you remember that? And we started laughing because we were like, you can't reference this. This is bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I remember they were mocking it. Everyone was saying you cannot source Wikipedia. Don't use it as a reference. I don't want to see it. But yeah. um, to be honest, it's my go-to thing. It's the number totally. one thing I look for when I want to find information on something. I it's my like starting about. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Absolutely. starting point. Of course. And, um, to all our listeners, I highly encourage you to donate to Wikipedia. It's yes. a very worthy cause. It is. It is. Um, it is. They do good work, and they don't. I know that like they are always like trying to just make knowledge accessible to people, and so like uh, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic resource, and I just hats off to the people who are writing all the entries. I mean, it's an incredible amount and diversity of uh, information out there. And yeah. uh, one little side story for you, Atosh. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've, I've, I've mentioned this little quirk of Wikipedia, but it's everything links back to philosophy. So uh -huh. no matter which uh, Wikipedia page you're on, yeah. if you click the first um, linked item in that entry, yeah. and you keep clicking to the, on the first linked item in the next one, you keep clicking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like the first sentence, the first URL. Something yeah. that's not in like in brackets or in special cases or whatever. You yeah. Just click the first one. You'll yeah. eventually end up at the page for philosophy. No so way, it, really? It's a very strange thing. I guarantee it. Try it with anything. Like, okay. Um, so look so up we'll, Frayne Selak. You'll get to yeah. philosophy. Look up World Wrestling Federation. You'll get to philosophy. It's the so, most random thing. You mean like, uh, 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 like uh, so like, uh, for example, like uh, um, as you click the first uh, uh, link uh, on, on the text uh, of whatever you're reading and then you yeah. click that one, that one, eventually the last one you'll get to where you can't go any further back will be philosophy. Yeah, I forget who told me this, but it, it blew my mind. So like, for example, uh, yeah. right now I'm on the Frey and Selak page and the first yeah. uh, linked uh, item on, on the entry says yeah. Frey and Selak is a Croatian man. Yeah. And Croatian is in, in blue URL, yeah. so I'll click yeah. that. Yeah. Um, then you go, Croatia is a country in Southeast Europe. You click that. Then yeah. Southeast Europe is a geographical region of Europe. Click, click then you click geographical geography continent. is a field of science devoted to the study of the lands, blah, blah, blah. You yeah. click science. Yeah. Science is a systematic enterprise that builds and organizes knowledge. Knowledge. No way. This is blowing my mind. Okay, knowledge yeah. is a familiarity, awareness, or understanding of someone, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Uh oh, we're getting in trouble here. Perception is the first link thing. Okay, yeah. It's getting a bit sidetracked, but we'll get there. Uh, perception. And then lead. Yeah. Uh, we're into sensory information. Yeah. Uh, stimuli. Yeah. Physiology. Yeah. Ancient Greek. Yeah. Yeah, ancient Greek. Yeah. Greek language? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. It's gone off the rails. Language uh, family. Are you doing this with me? 
Yeah, yeah. Languages. Yeah. Structured system. Yeah. Linguistics. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm, I'm in a really bad uh, loop here. Uh, we're, we're close. We're close. Okay, well, no problem. Okay, we'll get I'll there. To all our listeners, try this and let us know. If we can get the, and then it, if you if you can do it, just send us uh, the 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 way you did it, and then we'll do it. But I totally, I, I heard something like this before, but I never played around with it. But I'm a, I definitely think it's true because we were almost there, and I get it. Everything. Well, this was something we learned in. Um, I forgot which class I learned it in, but uh, there was a there was like a, a derivative uh, a class that most things derive back to like a, a number of categories, right? And one of them being philosophy. Like so, uh, mm. so uh, Wikipedia is sort of kind of an embodiment of that. So. Uh, that's amazing. That's very cool. People, if you know anything interesting on Wikipedia, little little shortcuts or little articles, send me because I also use Wikipedia as pretty much my my initial starting point on any topic. Uh, have you ever have you ever added an article or modified an article? I tried to, but then I got frustrated. And um, there's actually a very active community of people who will uh, check and modify and, and question what you're doing because. It's, it is like a very thorough uh, resource. And you know, there's people who are like um, they take trying it super to seriously. improve their reputation. You know, if you're someone famous who has a wiki yeah, page, yeah. There's, they've been caught out sometimes like editing their own thing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the community of um, contributors, they're incredible. Cause they'll like find you pretty quickly and uh, snuff it out. So I guess what I was writing was pretty uh, random and, and not very... Uh, concise and clear so i just got tired of like okay i'll leave it to the experts um but it's, it's pretty impressive dave I, I thank you for the article like i, I really enjoyed your story I, I always i love biographies of of, of of people generally and like this is really i'm going to look up more information about them and see if i can maybe find some more stuff but that was really really cool would you watch a movie if if, if there 100%. was a movie made about the guy do you think is that movie material I think it's movie material. It'll have to be kind of like Hollywoodized, you know, like uh, uh, maybe it's not like three car accidents. Maybe they like, like maybe he gets like, you know, run over by something like every type of automobile. <laughs> We've already done planes, trains, cars. <laughs> I mean, so, it's weird because like for me, this is like Coen Brothers material. It has dark totally, humor. Totally, totally. I mean, obviously people died and it's terrible, but yeah. this has like weird dark comedy written all over it for me. So I think uh, if the Coen Brothers are listening, they should take a look at... Uh, Maybe putting together a script on this. Yeah. Do you think the Cohen brothers are listening to our podcast? I no, think so. but maybe someone no, you know, maybe. who's listening knows someone who knows someone and they pass it on. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's true. I, I, I really think that's cool. And uh, yeah, like, thank you so much. That's interesting. Now I got to up the ante for the next one, but, uh, but oh. it's tough. It's tough. I mean, uh, it takes a little bit of uh, digging to try and think of what would be some, some sort of compelling material for uh, you and our listeners, but uh, yeah, I had yeah, a lot yeah. of fun. That's awesome. I um, 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 uh, I think uh, as we near the end of uh, this episode, uh, instead of, I know we usually talk about COVID, but we have a surprise for our audience. And in next week's episode, we have a mutual friend of ours coming on and he's an expert when it comes to COVID uh, because he's in the field. And so like I was thinking instead of talking too much about what's happening, we'll just save our questions for, for, for our mutual friend next week. And that way it'll be- Sounds good. It'll be more scientific. It'll be more uh, reputable. It'll be more organized. And then Dave, you and I, we can spend the week kind of coming up with really smart questions from Wikipedia. <laughs> oh, and <laughs> if any get... of our listeners have any burning questions uh, for an expert in um, this field, uh, please don't hesitate to email us or WhatsApp us. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's good. And like, yeah, I mean, maybe, uh, if we stayed at the same number of listeners, I would be so happy that it just means that uh, other than you and I, people are listening to our podcast, but if more people come, please like message us that we'll give you a shout out online. Tell us what you want to listen to. We're totally having just a fun time doing this. So be part of the, be part of the group. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Anyways, Dave, I, uh, I'm super excited now. I hope I have, I'm as lucky as this guy is in life. I don't think I've ever really been super, super, super brushed off with death, but if this guy can I hope do you don't it, have his kind of luck. I mean, that's not the, the best kind of luck to have. Well, yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> I, I wish I, I wish Just the same thing for you, Dave. I hope it's not. Look both ways before crossing the street when you go on your walks and yeah. uh, all will I, be well. 
for sure. I, I, I think as we uh, will end it here, because my cat is looking at me through the window. She found a way outside onto the balcony and looking at me through another window. I think she's locked out, so I got to go get her. <laughs> she's meowing. I got to get her inside. But Dave, okay. I'll, I'll see you next that. week. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Ciao. Bye-bye.